Hello students, as part of our new series, Basics Explained, we explain the basic concepts of different topics that you're likely to see on the SAT or the ACT. Today's video focuses on complex numbers. So what is a complex number? A complex number depends on the basic unit i, which is defined as the square root of negative one. That is, i is the square root of negative one, or i squared is minus one. This is the basic unit of a complex number, since in real numbers, the square root of negative numbers are not allowed. Now, the first thing that we need to understand is the powers of i. We know that i is simply i, i to the power one is i. i squared is negative one, that's from the definition of i. i cubed will be i squared into i, which is minus one into i, which is minus i. And i to the power four would be i squared into i squared, which is minus one into minus one, and that is one. Now, if you look at i to the power five, that will simply be i to the power four into i, which is one into i, and that is i. i to the power six is i to the power four into i squared, which is one into minus one, and that's just minus one. i to the power seven is i to the power four into i cubed, which is one multiplied by minus i, and that is minus i. And i to the power eight is i to the power four, the whole squared, which is just one. <clears throat> and if you observe, i to the power five was i to the power one, i to the power six is i squared, i to the power seven is i cubed, and i to the power eight is i to the power four. So we see a repetition of powers of i after every fourth power. So it's a cycle, which means that I can find any power of i if I simply look at the cycle of four, and if I divide the power by four and look at the remainder. So let's see how that works. Let's say I have i to the power two, six, <clears throat> excuse me, i to the power two, six, seven, five. Now divisibility by four is checked with the last two digits of a number. And we know that the number before 75 that's divisible by four is 72. So that's i to the power two, six, seven, two multiplied by i cubed, right? This is how we can write this number. Now, since two, six, seven, two is divisible by four, then the i to the power two, six, seven, two will simply be one, right? Because it would be four multiplied by something. So it will be i to the power four whole to the power something. So that's just one. And i cube we know is negative i. And so this is just negative i, right? As simple as that. Let's try i to the power 71,222. i to the power 71,222. I look at the last two digits for divisibility by four. We know that the number divisible by four before 22 is 20. So I write this as i to the power 71,220 into i squared, right? This is one because 220 is divisible by four. So one into i squared is negative one. So this is just negative. So this is the first kind of question that you're likely to see on SAT or ACT math sections, powers of i. So pretty simple if you remember the cyclicity of four. <clears throat> okay. Let's now define a complex number. Basically, if we have real numbers a and b, the expression a plus ib, where i is the imaginary unit, is called a complex number. Here, a is the real part, and b is called the imaginary part of the complex number. Now, a couple of things to remember. If I have two complex numbers, a plus bi and c plus di, and I know that they are equal, then the real parts, a and C have to be equal, and the imaginary parts, B and D, have to be equal. So both the real and the imaginary parts have to be equal respectively for the complex numbers to be equal. Now, let's look at addition and subtraction of complex numbers. When we add two complex numbers, we simply add the real parts, A and C, 
and the imaginary parts B and D, right? Similarly, when we subtract, we subtract the real parts separately and the imaginary parts separately. So then if I have to calculate the sum of these two complex numbers, it would simply be six plus seven I plus minus three plus two I. Six minus three is three and seven plus two is nine I. So my answer is three plus nine I. If I have to calculate the difference, six plus seven I minus, minus three plus two I. Six minus of minus three is six plus three, which is nine. And seven minus two is five, so nine plus five i. So as simple as that, if you have to add or subtract two complex numbers, you add or subtract their real parts and their imaginary parts respectively. <clears throat> okay, how does multiplication and division work? So let's say I have to multiply two plus three i with 3 minus 7i. Then I'll just open the brackets. 2 into 3 is 6. 2 into minus 7i is minus 14i. Um, 3 into 3i is uh, plus 9i and minus 21i squared. Right? Now I know that i squared is negative 1. So minus 21 i squared would be minus 21 into negative one, which is plus 21. So this minus 21 i squared is basically plus 21. So I have 21 plus six, which is 27. And I have minus 14 plus nine, which is minus five i. And that's my solution. So when I multiply two complex numbers, I would notice that obviously there would be a real part and an imaginary part in the solution. But the fourth term of the multiplication, which has i squared, will convert back into a real number because i squared is negative one. Okay, what about division? Let's say I had the same two numbers, two plus three i, I had to divide it with three minus seven i. <clears throat> What I'll do is I'll take the complement of the denominator. The complement meaning the complex number with the sign of the imaginary part reversed. So if I have a plus bi, its complement will be a minus bi. So for three minus seven i, the complement would be three plus seven i. So I'll take the complement of the denominator and multiply the numerator and the denominator with the complement. Why I do that, I'll explain. Now we'll proceed. So two plus three i has to be multiplied by three plus seven i. So we'll just proceed with the concept of multiplication. Two into three, six. Two into seven plus 14 i. Three into three plus nine i. Plus 21 i squared, which will become minus 21 as we know. Now in the denominator, this is three minus seven i multiplied by three plus seven i, which is simply a minus b into a plus b. So that's a squared minus b squared. So three squared minus seven i, the whole squared. Three squared minus seven i, the whole squared. Okay, so this 21 i squared will be minus 21. So six minus 21 is minus 15 and 14 plus nine is 23. So plus 23 I. And in the denominator, I have three squared, which is nine and seven I, the whole squared, which is 49 I squared, which is negative 49. So that's just negative 49. Now you see why I did that complement thing because the, because by using the complement, we are able to make the denominator of the solution real, and that will give us a complex answer, a proper complex answer. The denominator was real because we used the idea of a minus b into a plus b being a squared minus b squared, which gets rid of i in the denominator. So this becomes minus 15 plus 23i divided by 49 plus nine, which is 58. 
and let's just write it finally. I'm just going to clear this from here. So my final solution, which I'm going to write as A plus IB is minus 15 by 58 plus 23 by 58 I. Right? It's always good to write your answer in the form of A plus IB, and that's my solution. Okay, so let's do some quick practice with these concepts. Sample question one, solve 3x squared plus 75 is equal to zero. So 3x squared is minus 75. So x squared is minus 25. So x is plus minus square root of minus 25, which is plus minus square root of 25 times negative one. Now square root of 25 is five and square root of negative one is i. So x can be plus or minus five i, right? This is the first time you would have come across a question with the square root of a negative number. And since we don't work with this in real numbers, we are now getting accustomed to this idea since we are permitted to do that with complex numbers. Okay, let's go to the next question. If the expression three minus i divided by one minus two i is rewritten in the form a plus b i, in which a and b are real numbers, what is the value of a plus b? So we are basically being asked to solve three minus, one second, three uh, minus i divided by one minus two i, right? We are basically supposed to solve this. So we'll take the complement of the denominator, one plus two i, and we'll divide, um, and we multiply the numerator denominator with the complement. So in the numerator, we get three into one, three plus six i, minus i and minus two i squared. And the denominator, I get one squared minus two i, the whole square. Now, uh, minus two i squared, minus two i squared will be minus two into minus one, which is plus two. So this becomes plus two. So three plus two is five and plus six i minus i is plus five i. And one square is one and two i, the whole squared is four i squared, which is minus four. So that becomes five plus five i divided by one plus four, which is five, which is one plus i, right? Because five by five is one and five i by five is i. So then my solution is one plus i, and that has been given as a plus b i. So if I compare the real parts, a is one. And if I compare the imaginary parts, b is also one. So a plus b is two, that is the solution. So this was the basics of complex numbers. If you found this video useful, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what other concepts you'd like me to discuss in this series and I'll try and upload them. I'll see you in a new video soon. Take care. Bye-bye.